सो हेलो एवरीबडी एंड वेलकम बैक टू अर ब्रांड न्यू वीडियो एंड इन दिस वीडियो कवर प्रॉब्लम द थर्ड प्रॉब्लम डेट वॉज फ्रॉम राउंड एट जीरो फोर डिविजन टू सो लेट्स गैट स्टार्ट लेट मी प्रोमेट बैंक है सो इन द प्रॉब्लम वी हैव बिन गिवन एन एरे फॉर परम्यूटेशन सो वी हैव बिन गिवन अ परम्यूटेशन ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट माइनस वन so we have been given an array a which is a permutation of integers from 0 to n minus 1 uh where n is around 10 to the power 5 so we have to find a solution that works in o of n or o of n log n right uh near about that yeah so we have been given an array a that is a permutation of integers from 0 to n minus 1 and we have to tell the number of integer uh, the number of permutations that are similar to the given permutation a so we have to tell number of similar permutations to a and how do you define similar uh, we have been given a definition of similar in the problem so two permutations a and b are similar uh, if we take out any integer l and r uh, that is uh, two permutations a and b are similar such that if we take out uh, any integers any two integers l and r then max of sub array then max of sub array a of l up to a of r is equal to max of sub array from b of l up to b of r that is if you pick out any sub arrays from a and b their max should be equal right so if the following satisfied for all the sub arrays then the two permutations are similar so that is uh, both arrays i will call this thing going max pattern so going forward i will call this thing max pattern so two arrays a and b two arrays a and b should have a similar max pattern for them to be similar they should have a similar max pattern so that is the problem so given a permutation find the number of similar permutations to a so how can we do this so let's start with the first observation the first observation is that position of 0 will not change it is position of 0 will be fixed position of 0 will be fixed uh, i'm sorry my drawing pad is lagging uh, because of the summer heat i think so please uh, excuse me if there are some delays in the drawing yeah so position of 0 will be fixed so how can you show that so if you think about uh, the permutation will be something like a1 a2 and it will have zero somewhere in the middle or at the end or anywhere right so it will have a1 a2 it will have zero somewhere and then we will end at a of n now if you think about all the sub arrays of size 1 if you think about all the sub arrays of size 1 uh, that are a1 a2 zero will also be a sub array of size 1 similarly a of n will also be a sub array of size 1 then all the sub arrays of size 1 except 1 will have a max of zero that is a1 will have a max of zero a2 will have a max of zero all the elements in here will have a max of 0 except for 0 because on the only element that will have a max of 1 will be 0 so our element 0 will have a max of 1 all elements here will also have a max of 0 and our a of n will also have a max of 0 right so this is your array a so for array b to be similar it should also follow the same max pattern right so if your array is your array b Uh, as the two arrays must be similar so their max pattern must also be similar like uh, right uh, like i told you in the beginning so if two uh, arrays are, or two permutations are similar their max pattern should also be similar so if we have b1 b2 up to b of n and if we have to find the position of 0 in b as our two arrays follow same max pattern so it will have 0 0 0 right it should it will also have one here and 0 0 0 again here again so as only one element in b will also have a max of 1 right we can easily place our zero there right 
so using this you can easily show that position of zero in a and b will be same right position of zero in a and b will be same that is position of zero will be fixed position of zero will be fixed that is your very first observation okay so now let's start with the second observation that is observation two observation two uh, says that position of one will also be fixed and how can you show that so let's start with uh, our permutation a again so it will have zero somewhere let's call this index l and then it will have one somewhere let's call it index r right so now we have permutation b as we have shown uh, previously our position of zero will be same so we will we will have zero here again and now we have to find the position of one in our permutation b so how can we find the position of one so if you think about all these sub arrays that contain zero and that uh, that do not reach one that is uh, the sub arrays that uh, contain zero but end before index r so something like this right these arrays all contain zero but they end uh, but they end before index r so something like this right these all will have a max of one right these all will have a max of one It will have a max of one. This will have a max of one. This will also have a max of one. This will also have a max of one. This will also have a max of one. Right? As all these arrays will also lie in array B. Right? These all will also lie in array B. Right? So these all here must also have max of one. It also must have max of one. Right? So our one cannot lie in the range. Our one cannot lie in the range zero to r minus one. Because of a because if our one lies in the range zero to r minus one, then we can always find a sub array whose max is equal to one in array A, but it will not have max equal to one in our array B, right? So our index of one should not be in the range zero to r minus one in our array B. So it will it will not be in the range zero to r minus one, here, right? So now we have shown that our one cannot lie in the range zero to r minus one. So now let's try to think about index greater than r, that is r plus one and so on. So let me draw a new drawing for that. So if we have our array A, array A here, array B here, our zero will be here, our one will be here. Index L, index R. Our zero is again here. We have to find the index of one. Now we have shown that. Our one cannot lie in the range zero to r minus one. So now let's try to show that it also cannot lie after the index r. So for example, let's say our uh, one lies here. Uh, let's call this index r plus one. You can say, for example, let's call this uh, index r plus one. So now if you think about uh, max of subarray L two r, if you think about max of L two r index here. Max of L two R in array A will be greater than one, right? It will be greater than one because it contains zero and one already. So our max of range L two R in array A will have a value greater than one. But if you think about the same subarray in uh, permutation B, if you think about the same permutation array B, that is from index L two R, as our one is lying outside this subarray, our max of this subarray will be equal to one. Right, the max of this subarray will be equal to one, and as you can easily see that max of these, uh, the max of these two permutation is not similar, right? So in our array A, in our array A, max of subarray L two R is greater than one, but our in array B, max of L two R is equal to one, and these are not equal, right? So these arrays are not uh, similar, right? So you using this, you can easily show that our one can only lie at index R. 
where one can only lie at index r. Right. So where one can only lie here, it cannot lie after r. So our r plus one up to n minus one can also not contain uh, our one, right? So our one will also be fixed at position r. So these are the two observations that will help us solve the problem. So the the observations are. Let me summarize them once again. So, if you have an if you have a permutation A, where zero lies at index R and one lies at index R, then the position of these will be also same in the uh, similar permutation B. So our zero will also stay at L here. And our one will also stay at R here. Right. So now we have had two observations about positions of zero and one. And as you can, and as you know about max, max increases uh, as an integer, right? Like it, uh, it, it is continuous, right? So max uh, increases as an integer. So we have already thought about zero and one. So now let's try to think about two. Where will two lie? So now let's try to think about position of two. Let's try to think about position of two. Now there will be two cases here. There will be two cases. Our case number one is uh, that our two lies inside the range L two R. So if we have a given permutation A. The first case is uh, that our two lies outside the range L two R. So we, if we have our zero here, it is an index L. Uh, we have a one here. It is, it is at index R, and we have a we have a two that lies outside this index. Well, let's call it index K. Right, so our k lies. So our k lies outside L and R. So now we have to find the position where it will lie in our array uh, or in our permutation B. So our position of zero and one will be fixed, as we proved in the first two observations. So our positions of one, zero, and one will be fixed at L and R only. And now we have to find the position of two in a, uh, in our permutation B. Right. So how can we do this? Uh, you can again apply the same thing that we applied for our second observation. That is when we proved that position of one will only lie at R. We can do the same thing again. We can think about all subarrays. We can think about all subarrays uh, that contains zero and one and that end before index k. Right, so you can all you can think about all these subarrays. All these subarrays will have a max of two. So using this, you can show that our two cannot lie here. Our two cannot lie in the range zero to k minus one. Right, using this, you can show that. Our two cannot lie in the range zero to k minus one, and uh, using the same thing that we uh, had in the second observation, you can also show that our two can also cannot lie after the index k, right? So that may show that also for a brief second. Uh, we have our zero here. We have our one here. We have our two here. We have zero here. We have one here. For example, if our two lies outside the index k, that is, uh, that is, for example, it lies at index k plus one, then you can think about this subarray that contains zero, one, uh, zero, one, and two. That is from index L to k, and similarly in in from index L to k here. Uh, the following uh, max will bring uh, the max uh, of index of subarray L to k in array A will be greater than two, right? And a max of subarray L to K in permutation B will be equal to two, and these are not similar. So our two cannot lie outside the index K. So our position of two is also fixed, right? So our position of two is also fixed. So 
so that was your first case so in your case one that is when two lies outside l and r then our position of two is fixed that is position of two is fixed or you can say that number of possible positions number of possible positions is equal to 1 right so now let's try to think about the second case that is when two lies inside uh, 0 and 1 so here's your case 2 where your two lies inside l and r so here will be your initial array in zero here will be one and here it is l here it is r and here it is two so now you have your zero here now you have your one here and similarly in the secondary you will also have zero and one at the same positions so now you have to find the position of uh, two uh, in your array b uh, first of all let's try to think about if, if your two can lie outside l and r so let's try to think about if your two can lie outside l and r uh, for example uh, let's say your two lies outside r let's say it's more than r so then you can easily check about, check your max of uh, range l to r You can easily check your max of index L to R. Here, your max of L to R will be uh, will be equal to two, and here your max of R L of R will be greater than two. So obviously, these are not similar. So your two cannot lie outside L and R. So your two should lie between L and R. So that's the first thing. So let's try to see if there is some boundation on index of two between L and R. or can it like uh, we can choose freely right so let's try to think about that so we have a zero here we have one here and we have a two here l at index k this is r this is zero and this is one again so now let, let's try to think about where we can place two or can we place it freely Uh, so if you uh, choose any subarray here right any subarray that contains zero and that does not end at 1 it will have a max of 1 uh, right so like you can see there is no boundation on 2 here right we can place 2 wherever we want and the uh, max pattern will still be satisfied so we can uh, place 2 anywhere we want so we can either place 2 here we can place 2 here and if you and if you still check the max of uh, the subarrays will still be satisfied uh, as you can see here max of this is still equal to 1 max of this is still equal to 1 and if you and if you still check now max of all these subarrays will still be equal to 1 right so if you change position of 2 inside the range l to r our uh, max pattern will not be uh, uh you can say change right so our, our max pattern will remain same so our arrays will remain similar so we can like shuffle to between the indexes l to r so the number of possible positions here so our number of possible positions here will be equal to how much uh it will be r minus l plus 1 right so let me show you this so if we have our index l here if we have index r here it will be 0 it will be 1 so in total we will have r minus l plus 1 elements here right but two of these positions are all are already used that is 0 and 1 are already used so i can place a minus 2 here So number of possible positions it will be r minus l uh, plus one minus two. Or in general, you can say uh, if you are trying to place a number i, if you are trying to place some number i, your uh, 
uh, number of possible positions will be r minus l plus 1 minus i in a general form right so these are the two cases and these are enough like now you now you know position of two and then similarly you can try to place three as well similarly four so up, up to n minus one you can try to place the elements right so uh, let's try to summarize the solution what's the solution let's try to summarize it so you know that position of zero and one is fixed right position of zero and one is fixed Now you try to place two. Uh, now, now you try to place two. Let me do it something like this. Now you try to place two. So position of two. It will have two cases. If K uh, lies outside L and R, so that is K does not belong to L and R. And the second is K belongs to L and R. If it does, our uh, number of uh, combinations will be one only, right? And uh, and if it does belong to the range L to R, it will be R minus L, sorry, uh, R minus L plus one minus two. It will be R minus L plus one minus two. And also here, if it does not belong to the range uh, L to R, you also have to up update your range as well. So let me show that also. Uh, for, for example, in uh, let me draw it again. For example, uh, if you have your zero here, your one here, it is your index R, it is your index L. Uh, sorry, it is your index L, it is your index R. And if your two lies outside this, uh, let's say it lies at index K. Right. So now you now you know that your number of possible positions. Uh, uh, number of possible position is equal to one only that is position of two is fixed but now your range is no no longer l to r so now your range is expanded from l to k now your now your range is no longer l to r right so now your range now your range is expanded from l to l to k so now when you will try to check for position of element three you will check between l and k not between l and r right so when your element lies outside the range, you also have to expand your range. So now your total range is L to K, right? So you will set your R equal to K. So similarly, you will check for third, similarly four, similarly for element of position five and so on. And in the end, your answer will be, your answer will be uh, number of places you can place one into number of places you can place two and similarly for three similarly for four up to n minus one that will be your answer mod 10 to the power 9 plus 7 obviously that will be your answer yeah so i hope the solution is clear enough and if you guys want to see the code for this uh, here is the code. So I keep track of every uh, element's position using a map. Uh, first, I take the minimum that is L is equal to minimum of position of 0 and position of 1. Similarly, R is equal to maximum of position of 0 and position of 1. Then I start from 2 and I start I, and I start placing elements. So if my elements lies uh, inside the range, that is if position of I is less than R, and and it is less and it, it is more than l that is it lies inside the range l to r then i have freedom to place it anywhere in l to r so i will place it in r minus l plus one why the minus i here because i have already placed i elements so i positions are blocked right so i have uh, uh, less i slots so i will do r minus l plus one minus i because i have already placed i elements and then answer mod Otherwise, if position of i is more than r, then I will update my r, that is, I, I will expand my range. Similarly, if l is equal to position of, uh, that is, if uh, that is not the case, then obviously position of i will be less than l. So then I will expand my range to the left side. And in the end, my I will print out my answer. Yeah. 
so that is the solution to the problem and if you guys have a doubt do let me know in the comments and i will be happy to answer them and if you have some more doubts you can join my discord server uh, i am quite active there and yeah you can ask me something there if you want to also if you guys don't know continue newton school is offering a full stack development course the course is uh, over six months long and it is totally based on pay after placement model and you don't have to pay anything there is zero hidden fees there is zero upfront fees and they are granting you a minimum package of rupees 5 lakhs and the average package is rupees 7 lakhs and the highest package is over rupees 26 lakhs so it is a very great opportunity also all their mentors are from top mncs like google flipkart zomato etc also they will get you placed into the top mncs as well like google flipkart zomato uh, so uh, you can learn from the mentors that are working at those companies and you can land a job at those companies yourselves also you don't need to worry if you guys think ki yaar mujhe coding aati nahi hai maybe fresher mein koi bilkul nahi aata the course is over 6 months long and they will teach you from scratch so you can still sign up for this and if you guys are looking for a career in the tech field this is a very uh, this is a very great head start that you should sign up for and if you uh, want to land a job i highly uh, I highly vouch for this and uh, if you guys want to sign up there will be a link down below and you can go and sign up from there so yeah be sure to sign up for this and I will see you in the next video bye bye